Hello reformers and welcome back to Parisno. Now, when we left off, we were on a bit of a trading spree, you know, we were running around and selling a couple of things in some towns, and we also had a bit of a piece of some Volhia barbarians. It was our first piece of action with them, and not entirely sure if they're... I mean, yes, okay, you know, some of their units are extremely difficult to kill, but I don't know whether they are the best things to attack, because they are infantry, which is absolutely fine, because that makes it a lot easier for our archers to actually do anything, but... I'm not entirely sure if we can take them prisoner at all because our archers are so good they just kill them before they even get there so who knows about that now i have seen a number of people have said that bows are somewhat underpowered shall we say in parisno due to some options and i've kind of tried to tweak the options a little bit because I found the options that were basically making bows extremely difficult to use against heavy armor. The heavy armor was basically making bows, well, I don't, I don't want to say pointless, but they were, they were making them very, very underpowered in terms of how much damage they were able to inflict. And crossbows, on the other hand, have armor penetration. So, not entirely sure how that would work, to be honest, because, yes, okay, bows are technically under manpower and crossbows obviously do have mechanisms usually that will affect how much damage they do but yeah obviously you know I've done a little bit of tweaking there and I'm pretty interested to see whether that is gonna make a difference 16 damage is 19 damage is that regular is that regular damage for a bow of this caliber because obviously I'm using a power draw 2 bow so you know, it's probably not going to be the best, is it? But I would expect maybe a little bit more damage, but I'm not entirely sure. Oh, well, never mind. I've been chasing, by the way, these Sakaar Raiders for a pretty good amount of time. But, oh, well, never mind. I guess I just needed some... I, I needed some prisoners, to be honest. Yeah, my money has gone down, mainly because our weekly wages have just come in. And I think I lost 2,000... 900 or something like that so that, yeah that's pretty harsh now what i'm doing actually is i am on the way to velinaz yes velinaz and i'm going to be swapping out my forest arrows here because these large this large bag of draharan arrows is actually pretty good and as you can see my bow is 92 accuracy at the moment with how much 24 piercing damage now piercing damage technically should be absolutely fine against heavy armor. You know, you'd think the piercing damage would be able to get through that armor a little bit, but it seems like it's a little bit lackluster at the moment. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take these things to sell, of course. I am also taking some iron to Velenaz. I think that could probably be quite a lucrative trade option. And, oh yeah, I was actually attempting to relocate Remus, because apparently he has a quest now. And I did actually find him at Murdenhall, and, well, we're going to be going back there in just a second. But, yes, as I was saying, these bows are power draw 2 as well, and as far as I'm aware, these bows are not particularly good either. I mean, obviously they're bent, but, you know, if you, if you discard the bent prefix there, then you'd obviously, you know, you'd obviously know that it's about, it's about the same damage. And these things are not particularly good. These bows are not really good at all. Yeah, as you can see, I've just been chasing this guy throughout the entirety of the, the countryside. I chased them all the way from their Sakaar Raider camp, hilariously enough, and they were just staying one step ahead until they turned around because they had nowhere else to go. Technically, they did have somewhere else to go. They could have gone this way, but I suppose they just didn't think that far ahead. Oh yeah, what I've also done as well is I've tweaked some options and basically the one option that I wanted to enable was Formations AI. I personally feel like that could be really fun to use, but there must be a reason why the mod developers decided to disable it on default settings. Because I have not done anything to the settings until now and basically I'm a bit worried that there might be some sort of conflict there but anyway yeah I've, I've, I've done that I've changed that around a little bit and hopefully that's going to make a bit more difference to our strategies and our tactics and things like that because I'd like to be able to put our archers in ranks you know I'd like to be able to put them in ranks because obviously I don't want to 
yeah, I don't want to continually just spread them out by 10 paces every time or something like that. Anyway, I am almost at Velenaz. Hopefully we'll be able to get there soon enough. By the way, I can actually sell some smoked fish here if I haven't eaten it all. So let's just see whether that is indeed the case. I don't know whether naval battles are working. I, I, wait a minute, I think I did a naval battle a long time Oh, look, there we go! Elentor has taken Azure Keep from the Geldar. And that means the Geldar are no more. And, well, I mean, that wasn't really the reason why I didn't particularly want to join the Geldar, but I think that in general it would have been very difficult if we were, if we were even able to. I actually think that the mod creator commented something in regards to that, and I think they are unjoinable. I don't think they can be joined. So, you know, that is obviously something to take into account as well. Anyway, we're going to go into Velenaz and hopefully sell that smoked fish. And obviously, I do have a little bit of, um, yeah, a couple of prisoners here. Drahara has declared war against the Hakon Empire. I was just actually analyzing that in my mind, just thinking, hmm, does that have any complications for us? And then coming up with the answer, no, it doesn't seem to. Yeah, anyway, I'm not going to be joining any tournaments. Because these tournaments are, are going to be absolute murder. Real murder, like actual murder. Yes, we need to be quite careful about those. But we're going to be gaining a pretty decent amount of cash from all of these horses and all of these men. You know, putting him back together again. Ah. <laughs> ah, yes, of course. Okay, so I do actually have enough riding skill to ride this brown bandit horse. But I, I, I don't really want to ride that, to be honest. I would much prefer riding something like this elven horse. Because that would, you know, that would make sense, you know, because I'm, I'm, I'm an elf, you know, I'm an elf. So it would kind of make sense. Oh, well, never mind. I guess I'm just going to wait for another level and see if we can do that. Are there any good bows here? They, see, now that's a good bow, but the accuracy is not particularly good. I am only one power draw from being able to use that, unfortunately, but... Obviously, that obviously, you know, is going to make a bit of a difference with the amount of accuracy that you have anyway. So, probably not the best idea. Mostly, all of these things are giant armor and things like that. All right, so let's go in here, try and find a ransom broker. There we go. There is one. And we're going to sell for 851. Really? That's it? Wow, that is really bad. Okay, we're going to need to find a little bit better prisoners to take in my opinion okay let's assess the local prices i really wish we had faziel oh there's the geldar they have been eliminated and oh yes i'm actually unsure oh no i've forgotten i've forgotten yeah of course i do i always forget these things but when i'm whenever i'm doing two mountain blade series i always forget which one is in regards to you know which comment is in regard to what now obviously it really obviously changes dependent on what the comment is actually saying. But someone asked how many days I have. And I think this is on native, actually. Well, anyway, on Parisna I have 75 days so far. You can actually work this out if you start a new game in Parisna yourself. And then you go to episode one and you take a look at my date. It's probably, it's going to be the same, isn't it? It's going to be the same. And then you can work it out from there. You know, if you take 30 days every single month or whatever it is. And then you just go through the months. I, know, I mean, I know that takes a lot more time, but you can actually work it out if you so desire. Anyway, buying salt here. Yes, let's buy some salt. Ooh, nice. There's actually some pretty good salt to take here. And it goes to Murdenhall, which is fantastic, because that's exactly where I want to go to speak to Remus. So let's go and do that. I think I can... I think I can just speed up all the way. I don't think anyone's going to want to fight us, with the exception of maybe Zeladek. Hmm. Maybe Zeladek, the Chosen One, has something for us, and maybe he's going to be like, Oh, hello there. You're a very small party in comparison to me. Yes, he, he has... What, what is it now? He has like 600 or 800? I don't even know. Last time I saw him was in the previous version of Perizno, so not entirely sure if we're going to see him today. But obviously, you know, there, uh, there's some Sakaar Raiders. That would actually be kind of nice to fight. But as you've seen, they don't really give the best, you know, the best money when selling them to a ransom broker. So I think we have graduated from Sakaar Raiders. And instead, we should really be fighting Volhia Barbarians and maybe some Ilika Falki and things like that. But I don't really want to fight the Ilika Falki because obviously 
you know, technically we want them as allies eventually. But, well, who knows? Who knows what's going to happen? Okay, so, yeah, they're making peace. That's absolutely fine. And we have some Sakaar Raiders fighting these Hakon Empire Caravan. I think I'm actually going to go and help the Hakon Empire because I'd like to fight these Sakaar Raiders anyway, and we're going to get a little bit of relation with the Hakon Empire. It's not really a big deal, to be honest. I don't really care about the relation so much. But it's nice to get a little bit of cash along the way, and obviously Murdenhall is quite close by as we are right now. And maybe we'll be able to fight some larger parties. Who knows? All right. So now let's try... Oh, okay, so no. It, it apparently does not work. Apparently I have, I have actually enabled the formations AI and it doesn't seem like I'm able to do it as you can see here look I'm pressing 2 to get archers and as you can see look the menu does come up with formations but then it disappears I'm not entirely sure what's going on with that maybe one of the mod creators can let me know about that but yeah that's a bit weird that is a bit weird because I do have it enabled I seriously do have it enabled so I'm not entirely sure what's going on there and we won extremely easily well there you go <laughs> I was not expecting to win that easily, but okay. That's absolutely fine. Okay, so I'm actually going to go in to the options here. So as you can see, after I am KO'd, I have told them to go into Formations AI, will allow the new AI to take over for you. So I thought that might be quite interesting to see what they actually do. Formations Battle AI, select your da 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 da. Formations AI both allows the AI to use formations and changes their battle decision making. Native AI with formations is native AI, but carries out the native AI with basic formations. Maybe I should try that out? Maybe. Enable AI special orders. Allows the AI teams to use volley fire, skirmish mode, etc. Yeah, I, don't, I didn't really want that, to be honest. I mean, I didn't really see the necessity for that. And then, of course, we do have enable ranged penalty from weather. Now, I've disabled this because I want bows to actually be able to do something. I want to be able to actually kill people with my bow otherwise me taking five in power draw was an absolute waste and yeah that would be kind of sad in my opinion anyway so that's the pbod mod preferences and then we can take a look at these now this is much more in depth so if you you know you could sort all these things disable companion complaints charge on death that's absolutely fine and uh, yeah we have d yes now this is the option that i have disabled because this Basically, it means that bows get a damage penalty against heavy armor, while crossbows get armor penetration. So obviously, crossbows are really, really powerful in that regard now. And I've disabled it. So technically, considering I've disabled it, it should no longer make any difference to that. Now, I have changed the Xan invasion date as well, by the way. I've just increased it by a little bit, because I kind of feel like them arriving on day 200 would be kind of cool. And we have quite a few days until that time happens. Maybe I'll reduce it, maybe I'll increase it, I don't actually know, but it's kind of nice that you can actually change that. I have also changed my wait time multiplier. It was on 6 or 5, and I wanted it to be increasing a little bit faster. So, yeah, I, I put it to 8, and that is the default value as well. I'm not entirely sure why it was lower than that, but anyway. Uh, yeah, everything seems also... Yeah, look, allow formation rotation, that's absolutely fine. Disable mod rotations, I haven't disabled them or anything like that. So I don't know what could be making a difference here. So, you know, I guess we're going to find out if one of the mod creators actually sees this. And if you do, then thank you very much. Anyway... We're going to head on to Murdenhall if I don't see him on it. Ah, here we go. This is... <laughs> now, this is the kind of person that I don't really want to fight, even though... Yeah, I don't really want to fight these guys. You know why? Do you see those prisoners at the very bottom of, bottom of the list there? Glorious Knights of the Great Holy Bull. They have eight of them, so I can assume that they were able to destroy Lord Bullius. Obviously, they probably did that because of their battle advantage, but I don't have a very good battle advantage against them anyway. I do have seven in tactics, but I don't think that that is going to really work out too well. Maybe I could fight these guys. Yes, let's fight these guys and actually see how tough their berserkers actually are, because if we do check that out then maybe we can, you know, sort of summarize whether we'll be able to tackle them in the bigger army. 
So let's see whether that actually happens. Just going to tell everyone to spread out. Going to tell all the archers to spread out, should I say. And I'll tell the infantry to go over there. And the cavalry could just go somewhere. Well, I'm not entirely sure whether our archers are going to be able to hit from this distance. But, well, maybe we'll just give them the best possible chance to do that. And, oh, I do apologize about the cutaway there, but I had to sneeze. <laughs> yes, I had to sneeze. And if I sound a little bit different, then that's probably the reason why. Anyway... Let's see how we do here. I am not looking forward to this, actually. Oh, no, no. They seem to actually be doing something now. All right. So I'm going to actually get out my bow. Three damage from a headshot. Really? Three damage from a headshot? Come on, scout. You can do a lot better than that. 17 damage. Okay, that is a bit better than three damage, but still. Uh, no. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, oh. Oh. Okay, apparently melee damage doesn't actually do anything to them either. <laughs> oh my god. Wow, that was crazy. Oh well. Yeah, so I did attempt to do the amazing overhead attack on one of those guys, and they decided to ignore it completely. So it might just be that I don't have enough of any kind of, you know, power draw or power strike to be able to penetrate the armor threshold of these enemies so perhaps that is the reason because i do know that when you have too low a power strike or too low a uh, power draw and you know that is calculated against someone's armor value sometimes you deal very little damage because there is that much damage reduction it's very much similar to how your own armor reacts to a very very low level bandit so, for example, if I was to get extremely heavy armor and I decided to go against some robbers or looters or whatever, and if they hit me on the body, you know, if they hit me on the body area, then they would have basically no chance of dealing any damage whatsoever. So there is that to take into account. And yeah, we didn't actually get any prisoners or anything like that. So don't need to really worry about that. Okay, so here's Remus. He is actually here, but obviously I do need to sell the salt first, so we're going to do that. Ooh, nice. That's a good amount of money. That is a good amount of money. Nice. All right, I'm just going to see the trade prices real quick, just to make sure I'm not, not missing out on a bargain or anything. Ah, buying iron here and selling it to, at 4 iron would actually be a pretty good idea. And also buying furs and selling them at Fountain Hall. All right, I do actually have quite a few furs here, so I'm going to buy the furs, buy the iron. So Fountain Hall and 4 iron. Uh, two Fs. And we should be able to remember that. Okay, so where is Fountain Hall? Fountain Hall is down in the, yeah, Falcon area. So we're going to be going there and Fawn Iron as well. All right, so we are quite far away, aren't we? Well, hopefully the prices will not change by the time we get there. Anyway, let's speak to Remus. Greetings, traveler. Care for a drink? Sure, thank you. Don't worry about paying me or anything, it's on me. The innkeep here doesn't charge me anything after I help them out with a gambling debt. Then again, they don't charge for things within reason, of course, but still, they're generous souls. A far cry from the people I used to associate with. What sort of people? The Wolf Knights. My story with them is a long one, but I'm willing to share if you're willing to listen. Okay, where to begin? I am the younger of two brothers. We lived in a small village nestled amongst the foothills of the Reich's Mountains. It was a fairly isolated place that saw the older men mindlessly driving away at their chores, while the younger men nurtured dreams of the world that lay beyond the village. Lupus, my older brother, was in charge of guarding the village animals from the wolves that lived not far away. Every night he would stand vigil over our meager livestock with the howling of the wolves to help keep him awake. Strangely, the wolves never attacked. They would prowl in the darkness barely visible by the light of Lupus's torch but they never approached. My brother complained to our village elder, Garol, that his position was useless. Elder Garol wouldn't have any of that. Nonsense, he would say, and Lupus would spend the next few nights without provisions. Eventually, my brother came to me one day, all worked up over something. He kept flexing his fingers, eyes wide and shoulders shaking. From fear, anxiety, or exhilaration, I couldn't tell. One of the wolves approached him the other night, he told me, spoke to him in the human tongue, asked him to follow it. Sounds like he had just fallen asleep or something. That's what I thought too, yet he vehemently denied that suggestion, insisting that the wolf had spoken to him. Okay then, I said. I asked him what the wolf had shown him. He wouldn't tell me. He just shook his head and ran off to the village well for water. 
Then the next day came. Lupus and another lad got into a heated argument that drew the whole village around. The argument threatened to get violent when Lupus's hands blurred faster than our eyes could follow and smashed the man's head into bloody pieces. That couldn't be good. Yes, I see. Seems like he's got a bit of Elias. Yes. Elias is my character in A Clash of Kings, by the way, if you don't know. Anyway, it certainly wasn't. We stood there in stunned silence, too afraid to say or do anything, while Lupus stared at his bloody hands. Elder Garrel was the first to gather his senses about him. He proclaimed Lupus exiled from the village the moment he did. Why not just hang him? Yeah, let's just say that about his brother. That's a, that's a great idea. I imagine it had something to do with my brother's apparent super strength. Getting him in the gallows would have been a hard task, looking back on things. Despite what he did, I couldn't stand the thought of my brother traveling alone. I asked Elder Garrow if I could leave with Lupus. He nodded, but I think his mind was still trying to process what had happened. We left the village at dawn with no farewells from the people we grew up with. As we trudged away, Lupus stopped me and laid his hand upon my forehead. Blessings upon you, brother, he said, and what happened next was... Mm, I don't know how to describe it. Imagine the thrill of adrenaline, the bloodlust of battle. Now take that energy and multiply it a hundredfold. That energy coursed through my veins, leaving me paralyzed. But when I regained my senses, I felt reborn. I felt strong, powerful, able to take on the world, a million to one. It was strange. After his blessing, I could lift boulders with one hand and run faster than deer. We began our lives anew. At first, we traveled from city to city, fighting in the arenas. Our strength was unmatched. Lupus could shatter shields with a flick of his wrist. I would dart around my opponents and knock them to the ground before they knew what was happening. <laughs> Surely you are joking. I do not jest. I could knock you to the ground and be out of the city before you could get back on your feet. But moving on. We won fight after fight, tournament after tournament. Prize money came to us, and we eventually bought our own armor, weapons, horses even. Notoriety came too, and soon we had a small following. Lupus had an idea. Why not go bigger, beyond the arena? Become mercenaries, he said, and see more of what the world has to offer. We recruited from our following of admiring f fighters, and so the Wolf Knights were born. I'm afraid I have not the time for any more today. Perhaps another time. What? Are you se <laughs> are you serious? Yes, I understand. Farewell. I shall finish my finish my tale the next time we meet. Okay. Well, I guess that gives me a good time to end the episode. And if you'd like to hear the next part of Remus's tale, then check out the next episode. I guess. I thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.